Welcome to Soulful Adventures with Melissa Dormois. I'm so happy you're here, and today I have something very interesting to share with you from the current book, Transformational Living, Positivity, Mindset, and Persistence by Earl Nightingale. Recently, I've been on a self-improvement book binge, and this has been absolutely fantastic and transformational. It seems like it just keeps my spirits high and keeps me focused in the right direction, and there's never a dull moment when you're working on yourself, right? So today I want to share with you a little snippet from this book. This is Four Steps to a Healthy Self-Image. I thought what I'd do in expanding this channel a little bit is form a type of podcasts and book club, if you will. So there's certain passages and books that I'd really love to share with you because they're really life-changing if we really soak it up and apply it to our lives. So in this section, The Four Steps to a Healthy Self-Image, Earl Nightingale shares that one time the late Dr. Maxwell Maltz whom we called Uncle Max, dropped by my office for a chat and lunch. Now, Dr. Maxwell Maltz, he was an American surgeon and the author of a book entitled Psycho-Cybernetics, which is a system of ideas, I'm taking this right off of Wikipedia, which was a system of ideas that he claimed could improve one's self-image, leading to a more successful and fulfilling life. He wrote several books, Psycho-Cybernetics was a long-time bestseller. So his system of ideas apparently laid the groundwork for a lot of our self-help books that we have today. Dr. Maxwell and Earl Nightingale were friends. As a matter of fact, Earl Nightingale refers to him as Uncle Max. So let me continue. We got on to talking on his favorite subject, namely how a person comes to grips with himself develop a healthy self-image, and find freedom in the world. He had told me he had discovered four important steps that a person can take on a regular basis to form new habits that can build a healthy new self-image. As he talked at lunch, I made notes on a scrap of paper, and here are the four points in the order in which he gave them to me. Number one, forgive others with no strings attached. You must clean the slate absolutely, forgiving every person against whom you might hold some kind of grudge. You do this for your own sake, your own peace of mind. We don't hurt others when we hold hatred against them. We hurt ourselves seriously. It can lead to serious illness. So number one, forgive others, all others. If you can't take this first step, you can forget the rest. You haven't grown up yet. And this was his advice. And something interesting my son was saying to me last night is that while others may be responsible for some of the things in our lives, to truly grow up means that we don't put the blame on those people. For example, if someone has a difficult childhood, growing up means, yes, the childhood happens, but we take ownership and we grow from there. We can't blame our our parents for not being loving enough or being too hard on us or for this or that or the negativity or whatnot. I mean, most of us had difficult childhoods, right? But we can grow from that and being an adult means truly growing up, forgiving them and understanding that as crappy of a job as someone might do, they're really actually doing the best that they can from wherever they're at. And I know that's hard to hear sometimes, but taken from a deeper spiritual level, it is the truth. We're all doing the very best that we can at any given moment, even if it's not very good. So number two, forgive yourself. See yourself with kind eyes. Try to forget completely all the idiotic things you've done, the pain you've given to others, the embarrassments you've suffered, the mistakes you've made in the past. Again, wipe clean the slate and forgive yourself. Look in the mirror, he said, and forgive yourself practice this and you can actually pull it off. It's not easy to forgive ourselves. We tend to be much tougher on ourselves than we are on others. But the fact is, blame doesn't help. It's a destructive emotion. I think one of the hardest things is to 
learn to forgive ourselves, to be able to be compassionate with ourselves. And I think that it's helpful if instead of repeating things over and over in our mind's eye, if we just take the time and try to be compassionate with ourselves, not be so hard on ourselves because everyone makes mistakes. We're on a journey of learning and growing. This is a spiritual adventure. We're in human bodies having this spiritual adventure, but we are spiritual beings. So forgiving ourselves means that we're compassionate to ourselves, just as we're compassionate with our child when they make mistakes, right? We think about that and we apply it to ourselves. And number three, see yourself at your best. As Dr. Maltz put it, we can start the day in frustration or confidence. Take your pick. The intelligent thing to do is pick confidence if it's at all possible. There are bad days, but it's better to begin the day in a confident mood than in a mood of frustration. And this is so very true. What we repeat to ourselves becomes our reality. So if I get out of bed and I say, this is just, oh, I'm not ready for this day. This is going to be a horrible day. I'm not looking forward to it. We're setting ourselves up. I'm setting myself up for having, attracting those experiences that I probably don't want. And on the other hand, all it takes is for me to change my perspective, to decide that today is going to be a good day. No matter what, today is going to be a great day. And it will be. It's all about perspective. Number four, keep up with yourself. Don't worry about what others are doing or what others have done or have. Keep your own pace. It's a different pace from others. It's faster than some, slower than others. But forget the Joneses. And don't feel guilty about moving ahead of some of your contemporaries. The person who deliberately holds himself down to a slower pace just to be one of the gang is a fool. Keep up with yourself. Live your life you want to live. Earn what you want to earn. Do what you want to do. Live your own life. And don't be too concerned about how others are living theirs. I think this is a fabulous point. Because when we don't worry about what others are doing, we can work at our own pace. We can keep doing what we're doing without comparing to others. Just be your best, shine your light, and make a difference. And when he says, live the life that you want to live, I think this is an important point. Because if you're not doing what you love, then what are you even doing? Remember, if you've come to this channel, I know that you're interested in personal development and spirituality and creating the life that you love. Doing what you love to do in life means working towards that goal, holding that image in your mind of what you really want to do. And if you say, well, Melissa, I don't know what I want to do, then take some time, go into meditation or a quiet space in your mind and just think about what you love. Think about what you absolutely love to do. We're creators. We're here to create lives that we love. And we do that by using God's gift, which is our imagination. Our imagination can get us to wherever we want to go in life. And the other thing he says, earn what you want to earn. Well, how can you do that? You earn what you want to earn by programming your mind for success and for the amount of money that you want to make. I have a video that I recently uploaded, which is affirmations for money, for blessings, for good things coming into your life. We are always programming our minds or sometimes we're just running an old tape. So we want to implement the things the ideas, the salaries, the investments, or whatever it is that you're making money from, or maybe all of those things, hopefully. We want to focus those ideas and those aspirations by affirming those things to ourselves every day. Whatever it is that you desire, you can get there, but you have to use your imagination to do so. Imagination is God's gift to us. So use it, program your mind, use affirmations, take time right before you fall asleep or when your subconscious mind is 
really open to accepting these ideas, right? Your critical mind is kind of shutting down because you're tired and you're going into that dreamy state that us hypnotists talk about when we go into hip hypnosis, that's what we're doing. We're accessing that same state, that same level of brainwave. So in that moment before you're going off to sleep, but when you're really comfortable, you start imagining what it is that you want and imagining it in full detail, but you're imagining it from that place as if it's already true. So you're not just looking at it like a scene in your mind, like a movie, but you're actually engaged in it. You're actually doing the actions of whatever it is that you're doing once you get to your goal. That's what you're doing and do that in your, in your mind's eye. I promise you, If you do that every night, you will see changes in your life and you will work towards that goal. You'll see yourself taking those steps more and more. You'll start having situations come into your life. You'll have things, opportunities, people that will come into your life that are setting you up to have exactly the way that you're envisioning your life will become your life. It's truly, truly amazing. And I do this every night and I work with affirmations every morning as well. So those were the four things that he said, the four steps to a healthy self-image, forgive others, forgive yourself, see yourself at your best, choose confidence instead of frustration and keep up with yourself, march to your own drummer and don't worry about what others are doing. So some questions for you to think about. Are you holding a grudge? against someone in your life? Or maybe it's someone's, maybe it's several people. Maybe it's a group of people. But are you holding any grudges? Think about that. And think about the possibility to release those things. Now, are you able to look in the mirror and feel good about what you see? Are you focused on your own achievements or are you always comparing yourself to others? Comparing to others robs us of our joy. So thank you for joining me here today and I certainly hope that you will tune in again very soon. Once again, this is your host, Melissa Dormois at Soulful Adventures.